Hi, how's it going? This is Resident of Collinwood for YouTube. Resident under slash of under slash Collinwood for Fit Shoot. And I'm here to talk about Friday the 13th Part 5, <clears throat> A New Beginning. You know, I really love how this movie starts. You have Tommy Doyle, who they're showing as a young boy, right? And he's walking through the woods walking walking and here he comes upon Jason's grave and he's standing there all of a sudden he hears some people he hides in the woods he's watching these two guys come upon Jason's grave themselves and they start digging up his grave you know is this a dream yes but in many ways it's also a premonition, you know, Jason Voorhees in Jason Lives comes back, and it's Tommy and another guy, just like it's two guys digging up Jason in Tommy's dream slash vision, or premonition, sorry, this dream slash premonition is just that. It's a telling of things to come in this franchise in many, many ways. At least for me it is. That's how I see it. You know, if you see it differently, fine. I'm good with that. Friday the 13th, Part 5. A touch of Dan Curtis. Beautiful. Beautiful. I love it. Um... I'm going to trust me, I'm going to play this back later for sound. See if I could hear what I'm saying. But um, there's a fan running. It is hot. The humidity is murder everywhere. Um, just is, man. So, they. You see these two. They dig up the body, right? And Jason, you know. Anytime you see somebody buried with a, a machete, you, you could probably tell it's a dream, right? So he stabs the two guys. He gets out of the, uh, his grave. He, he's walking over with the hockey mask on. And he stands right in front of Tommy. And he lifts up. And Tommy's just, no, like, he can't believe it. And once Jason breaks the machete down, he wakes up. So... Friday the 13th, Part 5, A New Beginning. I love it. I love this movie. I love the opening. It's really, really, really great. And when Tommy wakes up, you see he's an adult. You know, a grown adult. Or teenager slash adult. Whatever you want to say. To me, he's more of an adult. I mean, it's been so long, right? And that's what's interesting about Friday the 13th, Part 5, A New Beginning. This movie is a time jump. I mean, this you know, you're not getting Tommy as an actual little boy no more. You're getting him as a man or you know and or a teen you know, teenager slash adult, you know, whatever you want to say. And he's going to the Pinehurst Mental Outdoor Mental Institution. This is his final step for rehabilitation all, to get back into normal society. Which, along the movie, you sort of wonder, you know, what should Tommy have been here? Because it seems like Tommy, Tommy does not have many lines in this movie. In fact, he hardly talks at all. Tommy Jarvis, to me, did not seem like he was ready for the outside world. Even within the frame of this movie. I just think that... The character in this movie has a lot of confliction to him. And his biggest confliction is Jason itself. He is haunted forever by the moment of Jason killing his mother. Again, I think Jason saw his mom's body in Friday the 13th Part 4, the final chapter... Part 5, you know, he's really tormented. Was Jason in Tommy's head? 
I think Jason's the one guy Tommy could not mentally possess. I do think Jason had possession powers. Adam Marcus got this right. Jason had some sort of possession powers. That's, a, that's another reason I love Jason Goes to Hell. The body jumping. It made sense to me. Jason could get inside your head, whether he was alive or dead. And there was something to him. So, for part five, when you see Tommy sort of battling the mental issue of Jason, him seeing Jason in the mirror, you know, and then when he sees Roy Burns later on, who's dressed as Jason, he just thinks he's seeing a, an, another hallucination of Jason, not the real deal. So, this movie has a lot of great psychology. Before I get into that, did Tommy's sister abandon him? I think so. As much as I hate to say that, I think Tommy w was was left behind. I think his sister did not know what to make of it of what her brother had done I don't and in fairness to her I wouldn't either because again you know whether he saw his mother's body or not Tommy did everything he could to make sure Jason would die and that's something I, I don't forget that Tommy Tommy felt something when he was killing Jason. And I think he felt the pain, the pain, the loss of his mother because his mother was killed. So, but I touched on all that in the last video. With this video, Tommy himself, you know, again, he doesn't have many lines. He's almost mute in this movie. I mean,. Have there been other characters in history that don't talk? This is this is why I appreciated Jamie Lloyd in Halloween 5. Danielle Harris will never get the credit she deserves for Halloween 5. Because there are people who just don't like it. I like it a lot, but... When you go watch Halloween 5 in this movie, Friday the 13th, the, you know, The New Beginning, Part 5... There's a lot of similarities between Tommy here and Jamie in part five. They're both they're both afraid. That's number one. Number two, number two is they both rarely speak throughout the movie. Jamie has a little more lines than what Tommy does, but the only reason that is is because you get those scenes in the house and you know she does begin talking when Tina gets kidnapped, <laughs> when Tina's in the car with Michael, <laughs> you like that? So, but for Friday the Thirteenth Part Five, I think where Tommy, it, Tommy doesn't know what to make of the environment around, not just the environment around him, but the people around him. He, he's so to himself, you know. They, he doesn't. He doesn't know how to act around public people yet. And I think that's what this really was trying... This movie showed to me about Tommy. He wasn't sure of how to act around people. And you go watch this movie, that shows. He really... He could not get over Jason killing his mother. Now, to get to Roy Burns. The, the person who made Pamela... Who actually did feel Pamela Voorhees' pain and did the exact same thing Pamela did. Roy Burns, what an amazing character and what a hell of a copycat, Jason. I mean, beautiful job. I love the character. I really thought the twist in this movie was excellent. The ambulance driver. When did I know? The moment Jason popped up in front of the ambulance, I'm thinking, it's, it's fucking one of the, it's Roy. It's, it's the ambulance driver. It's Roy Burns. 
<laughs> I love how the kid screams and he runs, bro. He runs, he runs. Yeah. Keep running, too. Don't, just keep going. Keep running. Don't look back. Don't worry about Pam. Speaking of Pam. Did, or actually, did Roy Burns mean to go into full Jason mode? No, I don't think so. If you go watch this movie, this movie, is it a whodunit? In some sense, it is. But this movie is also a frame-up movie. And what I mean by that is, Roy Burns, in every way, shape, and form, is doing his damnedest to frame Tommy Jarvis. He puts the bodies in Tommy's room. He, he, you know, Tommy's never around, is always missing when the murders are taking place. So, or you just don't see him. So it's easy to put the doubt in the mind of not only the audience, but the characters as well. And that's where Pam comes into play. Pam, for as much as I thought I really thought the character could have had more likable personality. I didn't love Pam's personality at times in this movie. I just thought it was too, you know, it was more like a mom, is what I'll say, than a camp counselor. And that's sort of my issue. And maybe she was a mother, you know, I don't know. Maybe the character was. I just feel, again, I don't hate the character, I just, I don't know, I'm indifferent about the character is what I'll say, and that's where I'll leave that. I like how Pam, I do think Pam believed Tommy was committing the murders. I think when they saw the hockey mask, the, you know, Jason pop up. They thought it in front of the ambulance. They thought it was Tommy. I love how the little boy runs runs him down with the tractor. That was beautiful. This movie has everything. It has murder, suspense, noir with the cops, action. It has everything. This movie is a perfect ten in the Friday the Thirteenth franchise. Now to get to the cops, and I'll get back to Pam as when I'm done with the cops. You know, to me, these got to be the weirdest cops in the Friday the 13th franchise history. I can't remember ever in the franchise where a cop, a cop literally accused a dead man of committing murders. I know who your killer is. Well, who, goddammit? It's Jason Voorhees. <laughs> but he, here's the thing. He makes good points when the guy says, oh, they... they they cremated him. Oh yeah, were you there, Mayor? Were you there when they cremated him? Did you see him? See them do that? Did you see them push the button? No. I love that point. That is, these the sheriff in this movie. Though he's weird, I like him. He's convinced it's literally a dead person committing the murders. He's not thinking about a copycat killer. I found that so interesting, and I guess. You know, when you look at it, when this movie was made in the 80s, you know, not too many people's mind was on copycat killers at that given time from a film standpoint. But for me, that's, I, I just found it curious, strange, and weird. I liked his personality. I wish we'd have got a little more of the cop in the movie. For Pam, do I blame Pam for thinking it was Tommy? No, I don't. I think Pam had every reason to suspect Tommy could have been the killer. And Tommy himself puts that doubt in her mind, too. Tommy being, again, distant in this movie with the other characters. Tommy not really opening up to too many characters in this movie. And his, again, his lines are very limited, and he does, he, he does not really speak too much in this movie. And with the other characters, his communication is very, well, non-existent. -exist what that 
Now, where that makes up for this is, is his quietness, his stillness, his hallucinations. The actor sold you and made you feel sorry for him there. Does he put doubt in the audience's mind that he he's the killer? Yeah, I do think Tommy... Tommy could have been the killer easily. When I first watched this movie when I was a kid, again, I said it. I didn't realize Roy Barnes was a murderer until the, he popped up in front of the ambulance. I'm thinking, God damn it, it's a fucking other paramedic. It's Roy Barnes. And I'm thinking, okay, well, why? <laughs> and then he revealed the twist that that boy was his son. And I found that interesting. I really... I love the movie for what it is. It's a whodunit. It's a, a frame-up movie. Again, the killer tries to frame Tommy. But the one thing I take away most is... Was Jason in this movie? He may have been. And here's what I mean by this. Roy Burns has Tommy all framed up for these murders. He could just leave Pam and the boy and Tommy alive and be done. He could just literally walk away scot-free. No one would know any goddamn different, right? No, he comes back one last time chasing them through the woods. But I, I get chasing them away from the paramedics. But to me, when he got to the bar, the back to Pinehurst, and you had Pam and that boy, the the young kid, and Tommy wasn't there yet, but he would arrive later. When you had those two there, and he shows up, where he's in Jason mode, is he's feeling pain, he's bleeding, but he keeps pushing forward. I do think at that point in time. In that, from that point in time in that movie, Jason took control of Roy Burns' mind. I really do. I, I honestly think Jason took control of Roy's mind and began killing as Roy Burns. It wasn't Roy Burns anymore in, in, in his own head. It was literally Jason. You Now, if you say, well, it's just Roy truly believing he is Jason... I would not argue or debate that point one iota. I would agree 1,000%. Because that's that's there too. This movie literally is perfect. I love it. I don't know why... It, if, it, if it gets heat, I don't hear it. Listen, this movie is a 10 to me. I love Friday the 13th Part 5. Now... I have a real good question for you guys about this movie. What if Tommy would have been the killer? Hmm? What if Tommy would have been the killer? How how do you think that would have played out? <laughs> that's my question I'll leave you guys with. Now we know he's not, but I'm gonna have that's my fun question I'm gonna leave you guys with. For this video tonight so I hope you guys enjoyed this video I think I got everything I wanted to in this uh, review I do think that again Tommy Tommy's silence really helps and hurts him in this movie it helps build the actors you know selling because he's selling the emotion of of what he's went through and every kind of thing he's imagined with Jason. But where it hurts him though is it's too it's almost too easy to point the finger at Tommy for the murders. And that's the one thing I'll take I'll take away from this movie most. They make it all too easy to point the finger at Tommy. Don't be fooled. Don't be fooled, goddammit. It's not. It's not Tommy. It's Roy Burns. Oh, Roy. Roy, you sick. Sick son of a bitch. <laughs> oh, hell. But, uh, I'm having fun tonight with this. 
it, it's Friday the 13th. If you cannot get, do a fun video around Friday the 13th movies, come on. Um, yeah, but I really love this movie. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.